The frequency of a wave represents how often the wave repeats itself. In the FET simulation showing us water waves, the drips from the faucet represents the energy added to the system to create the waves. The drip rate controls the frequency at which the waves are produced. In the sound simulation, we can control the frequency of the speaker cone. As the cone pushes in and out, it bumps the air molecules around it. The molecules then bump other molecules, kind of like the Newton's cradle, but more random. Any object that vibrates in the air can produce a sound. Here I am, shaking my hand up and down. If I do it as fast as I can, it's about three cycles per second. At that low rate, my vibrating hand does not produce a sound. Here's a meter stick. If I clamp it to the table and pluck it, it will vibrate up and down. The longer the stick is, the slower it vibrates. At longer lengths, the vibrations do not produce a sound. If I use less of the stick, it vibrates faster. It starts to make low sounds. The shorter I make the stick, the faster it vibrates, and I start to hear a higher pitch. Instead of making these sounds in a purely mechanical way, we can switch to doing it electronically. We talked about how generators and speakers worked in our magnetism unit. If I plug this generator into this speaker, it produces a tone. As I turn the handle on the generator, a gearbox inside the unit spins a coil of wire near a magnet, producing a current. Usually this would be an AC current, but this device was modified to output an interrupted DC current. That current is actually what's driving the speaker to make the tone. This device is called a signal generator. It's an AC device that allows us to control how fast we want to spin our magnet next to the coil, just like the FET generator simulation from before. The output from this device is an alternating current at the frequency we ask for. If I attach this generator to our speaker, we can hear what all the frequencies sound like. Textbooks say that most people can hear frequencies between 20 cycles per second and 20,000 cycles per second. Let's check. If we start at the low end, we can hear individual clicks of the speaker as the current turns around slowly. As I increase the frequency, it starts to sound like an actual tone. If I keep going, the pitch increases. This first dial represents the lowest sounds that we can hear, and this range is where we find the notes in the first two octaves on a piano. I can step up the frequencies by a factor of 10 and then go through the spectrum again. This set of frequencies goes from 100 cycles per second to 1000 cycles per second. This is where the third, fourth, and fifth octaves are. This here is a middle A, 440 cycles per second. That's the note that most orchestras use when they tune up. The next higher range goes from 1,000 to 10,000 cycles per second. The highest note on a piano is around here, about 4,000 cycles per second. Our ears still detect higher frequencies, though. The last power of 10 takes us from 10,000 cycles per second all the way up to 100,000 cycles per second. I know you can all hear the 10K signal. I'm gonna slowly increase the frequency and at some point you won't hear it anymore. It's still on, but it's at a pitch your ear can't reproduce. Here's 12,000, this is 13, this is 14,000, 
15. At this point, I can't hear it anymore. Most of you probably still can hear it. The older we get, the less our ears are able to reproduce these higher frequencies. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Can any of you still hear this one? My cat can still hear it. Their ears are sensitive to a wider range of frequencies than we are. Now let's switch over to light. As we saw in the reading, the frequency of light corresponds to the color of light. In the FET simulation, we could see the colors cycle through the rainbow as we change frequency. There's actually a lot more to the light spectrum than just the rainbow. The light that we can see has a frequency of 10 to the 14 cycles per second. That means it shakes the blanket up and down 100 million million times each second. It turns out there is light that shakes the blanket way less often, and also way more often too. This picture represents a more complete picture of light. This is called the electromagnetic spectrum, and it represents all the different ways that the blanket can shake. There are some interesting things on this list. Radio is light. Heat is light. X-rays are light. The only difference between all these different things is the frequency with which they shake the blanket. In the late 1800s, there were physicists that studied visible light. There were other people that were beginning to study radio. There were other people that were studying heat. They had no idea they were studying the same thing until after we figured out the real relationship between electricity and magnetism. Even after we started to understand this, there were still issues. Depending on what the focus of your research was, you gave different names to the same colors. For example, doctors would refer to all this stuff as x-rays. They would say that UV was weak x-rays and that gamma rays were strong x-rays. Nuclear physicists referred to x-rays as weak gamma rays. Nobody was wrong. The borders between the types of waves are ambiguous. This leads to spectrums that look like this, where some types of waves are actually acknowledged to have different names. All of the different types of light are useful. The federal government actually regulates usage of the spectrum. For example, AM radio is a million cycles per second. FM radio is a hundred million cycles per second. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are a billion cycles per second. Some bands are only allowed to be used for TV, and some are strictly used for the police, or for the military, or for air traffic control. To give you a sense of how complicated this regulation is, here is the official U.S. government allocation of the spectrum. The last thing that I'll mention here is that not all of the types of light are equally energetic. All of the light that is lower in frequency than the visible colors is low energy. These flavors of light do not have enough energy to kick an electron out of an atom. That means that they can't affect the chemistry of materials. Light that is of higher frequency than visible light does have enough energy to kick electrons out of atoms. This would potentially allow the atoms to recombine in new ways. These forms of light are dangerous. Mild exposure causes sunburns. High exposure can cause cancers. Thank you.